Right, uh, knowing this is going to be a contact sport, I might have worn something else. But um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for that introduction. My name is Richard Boyd, and I'm a structural engineer materials consultant at Arup. And I'm going to talk to you today for about eight minutes about um, a project that's been a product of the partnership between Arup and the Ellen MacArthur Foundation called Principles to Practices. So Arup has been global knowledge partner for the built environment with the Ellen MacArthur Foundation since about summer 2016. And uh, that partnership has touched on many different aspects of applying circular economy principles to the built environment. And looking at that from many different countries that Arup operates in. We've been looking at cities in China. We've been looking at business models in Europe along with BAM. And we've been looking at some circular economy demonstrators in the US in partnership with Google, New York City, Turner Construction, and GXN, 3XN. But today I'm going to talk about a project I've been involved with here in Europe called From Principles to Practices. Thanks to the work of the foundation, we're all very familiar with the principles of a circular economy. Yet somehow, when you're on a construction site watching a building come together, you do wonder how these principles can be made fully relevant for the construction industry and wider built env environment we know today. The principles are still far, far removed from current built environment practices. There is therefore a clear and pressing need to translate the circular economy principles developed by the foundation into built environment practices that we can all apply on our projects today. The purpose of this project is to address that need. We want to move beyond the discussion further beyond the discussion of pure principles and think about how we might apply them at scale on real projects. The project is running in two phases. And today, I'm reporting to you for the first time some of the preliminary findings from phase one. The first thing that was needed in principles to practices was a clear vision of how, built environment, how the built environment will operate in a circular economy. Our vision takes account of the fact that the built environment operates at different scales. It operates at national economy scale, at district level, in infrastructure, buildings, and components. In addition to each scale, we also have made explicit reference to two cross-cutting themes, systems thinking and digital technology. And we also recognize there's a specific need to consider how we can justify taking the additional time needed to deconstruct rather than demolish our buildings. And most importantly, we needed to recognize, and our vision recognizes, that a built environment operating on circular economy principles must deliver a more responsive and more supportive built environment for both people and nature. So having established this vision, we then looked at where we are now. We looked at 116 projects from around the world operating at all five scales. And we compared where those projects were with our vision. Each project had some element of circular economy principles already applied, be that the incorporation of recycled materials, the regeneration of natural ecosystems, or even just the utilization and sharing of a building more intensively. Each case study was scored for its social, environmental, and economic potential. We also conducted over 100 interviews through five European cities, London, Amsterdam, Milan, Berlin, and Aarhus in Denmark, and with the support of GXN 3XN for the Danish interviews. The engagement covered what we viewed as the full stakeholder spectrum for the built environment, investors and policymakers, clients, contractors and designers, suppliers, demolition contractors, and often overlooked built environment users themselves. By combining our analysis of the stakeholders with our interviews, we've been able to identify key barriers, enablers, and opportunities for the transition to a circular economy in the built environment. And very quickly, a clear pattern has emerged across all five cities and all, all eight stakeholder groups. There are three things that need to be addressed to help make the transition possible. The first is collaboration. We see this as a reaction against the fragmentation that the built environment industry is famous for. This fragmentation means that the benefits of long-term investments in the built environment accrue to many different stakeholders over the lifetime of an asset. It means that it rarely, those benefits rarely come back to the investor who stumped up the cash for that investment in the first place. 
So only by changing the models by which we deliver built environment assets can we align the incentives and create the new win-win situations that make long-term investments in the environment a compelling commercial proposition. For example, we definitely need to find ways to bring CapEx, those responsible for CapEx and OpEx into the discussion at the design stage as early as possible. The second theme is knowledge. While almost all our stakeholders were able to recognize the potential benefits of a circular economy when applied to other sectors, particularly fast-moving consumer goods or automotive, few were able to clearly articulate how they thought these benefits might be captured in the built environment. Furthermore, few stakeholders were able to clearly describe the first steps they would take to begin their and their organization's journey on the road to transition. And so there is therefore a clear need for greater dissemination of knowledge about circular economy and its benefits, and to signpost the steps along the way to a transition. And the third theme is policy. Policy was seen as a barrier, an opportunity, and an enabler. Policy is a barrier when existing regulatory frameworks prevent the adoption of circular economy initiatives, for example, through overly prescriptive waste controls and regulations. Policies are an opportunity because policy change can allow new circular economy value propositions to become realizable. For example, government support of the development of autonomous vehicles has the potential to deliver a step change in the capacity of existing road networks. And policies are an enabler. Policymakers can support the transition either by fostering new approaches through public procurement or even by starting us along the road to systemic change by taxing resources instead of labor. Most important thing to say here is that policymakers have to make policy based on evidence. And the only way that we can get that evidence is that, that we need new collaborations between private, public, and third sector organizations to generate that evidence base from real projects. Having com just completed phase one, we're now in the process of framing phase two. We expect that phase two will be all about quantification of both the tangible and intangible benefits of circular economy in the built environment. The in the report by BAM and Arup on circular economy business models, we explored how business models might operate in a circular future. At each stage of a new circular system in the built environment, there will be new value relationships, new value exchanges, and more effective ways of realizing value from built environment assets. In phase two, our aim is to quantify these new relationships, just demonstrating how significant the added value of circular economy approaches will be. We also need to analyze the future circular economy system. As mentioned earlier, circular economy will be implemented on different buildings in different ways. We therefore seek to develop models that deliver best value in different asset typologies. Exactly what these models look like remains to be seen. And yet, we want to consider investment products, organizational structures, and contracts. And finally, the most important thing in phase two is that we want to take these models, developed through the desk studies, and apply them on real projects, demonstrating real value with real clients in real places. And, I want to and as I close, I want to finish on this thought. The overarching goal for phase two is to reinforce the fact that circular economy is a business strategy, not just a sustainability strategy. And we need this to be widely recognized in the built environment in order for the transition to become a reality. Thank you very much.